Hello again, this is Michael from TOEFLresources.com and today I am very happy to present the 2018 edition of my guide to writing a TOEFL integrated essay. That is to say the type 1 writing task on the TOEFL. In today's video I am going to begin by talking about the three main styles of questions you might face on the test. Then I will present a real question right from ETS, the creators of the TOEFL, and I will conclude by walking you through the process of actually writing your own TOEFL integrated essay. I'll show you how to take some good notes, I'll talk about how to write an introductory paragraph, and finally how to write three good body paragraphs. All right, with that out of the way, let's begin by talking about the three main styles of integrated writing questions you might face on the test. First up is the argument style. Here, the reading makes an argument about a specific topic. It includes three supporting reasons. After you read this article, you listen to a lecture which challenges this argument. So, for example, the reading might make the argument that the Vikings were the first people to visit North America. After that, you would hear a lecture which challenges this idea, which doesn't agree that the Vikings were the first people to visit North America. Next up is the explanation style question. Here, you begin with a reading that provides three separate ideas about the cause of something, or the use of something, or the reason for something. Then, you listen to a lecture which challenges each of these three ideas. So, for example, the reading might provide three ideas about why the city of Angkor Wat collapsed. But then the lecturer would say that each of these three ideas specifically is incorrect. Finally is the problem and solution style. Here, the reading suggests three problems related to some topic. Next, you listen to a lecture which shows how each problem can be solved. So, for example, you might get a reading about three problems related to using bacteria to clean up oil spills. But then the lecturer will show you how each of those three problems can be solved. Now, I think you can see that these styles are very, very similar. You're getting a reading and then a lecture which specifically challenges that reading. And you've got the rule of three here. Three supporting reasons. Three ideas. Three problems. Likewise, the lecturer challenges the exact same three reasons. He challenges the exact same three ideas. He challenges the exact same three problems. What this means is that no matter what style you get on test day, your essay will be constructed in the exact same way. In a few minutes, I'm going to give you some templates that you can use to structure your essays. And I want to emphasize that you're going to use the same templates no matter what style you get. And in fact, if ETS introduces a new style, it doesn't matter. You're going to use the same templates. Take a look at the bottom of the screen right now. This is an important rule to remember. They're only using what we call casting doubt style questions. 
This means that the lecturer will always challenge the reading. The lecturer will never support the reading. The lecturer will never agree with the three problems. He will never say they can't be solved. He's never going to challenge those three ideas. I've been studying the TOEFL for six or seven years. I haven't come across any real supporting style questions. This could change, and if it does, come back to the channel because in a few weeks I plan to make a little video about what to do if the lecture supports the reading. I can almost guarantee you that it's not going to happen, so you can probably ignore that video. But if you must have it, I'm going to make one just for you. Now, before I get to the actual writing of the essay, I want to talk a little bit more about how ETS creates the reading and how they create the lecture. They use a few tricks and they use the same tricks week after week after week. If you understand these tricks, your job will be a lot easier on test day, I believe. Now the main trick here is that the reading and the lecturer are kind of like mirror images of each other. They present their arguments in the same order. The arguments are opposites, but the order they do it in is the same. Check this out. The reading begins with an introductory paragraph. In that paragraph, the author makes his main argument, or he presents the thing he's making an explanation of, or he presents the thing he's going to mention some problems about. Then he writes his first body paragraph. In that paragraph, he gives his first supporting reason, or his first idea, or his first problem. Then he writes his next paragraph. He gives his second supporting reason, his second idea or a second problem, and so on for the third and final body paragraph. After that, the reading is done. Meanwhile, the lecture always begins by stating his main argument, which is going to be the opposite of the reading. Or he's just going to mention the thing which he's going to give ideas about. Or he's going to mention the thing which he doesn't think has any problems. After that, he's going to directly challenge the first supporting reason or the first idea or the first problem from the reading. After that, he's going to challenge the second supporting reason, the second idea or the second problem. Finally, he's going to challenge the third reason, idea, or problem, and then the lecture is done. So remember, the lecture challenges the reading points in the same order as they originally appear. If you understand this, your note-taking will be a lot easier, and it will be a lot easier to take your notes and put them into an essay. Understand this trick because ETS never changes the way they put together these questions. All right, let's talk about a question. Now, today's question is from the official TOEFL IBT Tests Volume 1. It's the question from that textbook uh, about the Chaco Great Hoses. This is an explanation style question. Now, I can't give you the reading and the lecture because ETS owns those, but the textbook is very easy to find. You can get it on Amazon or elsewhere. Now, even if you don't have the book, do not worry, because the main point of this video is to give you structure, is to give you templates you can use that are universal. So, I don't really actually care too much about the actual arguments about great houses. What I care about is creating an essay 
And that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do in just a few seconds. So before we actually write the essay, we need to take a few notes. Now, how do you do that? Well, kind of like this. Now, I wrote these notes uh, by looking at the lecture transcripts and I gave myself extra time. These are meant to be illustrative. Your notes probably won't be so perfect, but it's giving you the general idea of what you should be doing when you take notes. It also emphasizes how these are lining up perfectly with perfect symmetry between the reading and the lecture. So see what I did here at the beginning? I made a note of the main argument from the reading, which is there are three theories to explain the use of the Chaco Canyon houses in New Mexico. But then notice when I was taking my lecture notes, I got the main argument, which is the three theories are incorrect. Oh, it lines up, doesn't it? Now, the first notes I took from the reading were from the first paragraph there, and it says they were used as residences. And I got a couple details about that. And then at the beginning of the lecture, he says, no, they weren't used as residences. And he gives some details about that. And then in the middle of the reading, I got a couple notes about how the houses were used to store food. But then in the middle of the lecture, I got a couple notes about how they weren't used to store food. Likewise, at the end of the reading, I took some notes about how they were used as ceremonial centers. And at the end of the lecture, I got some notes about how they were not used as ceremonial centers. So you see what I mean about the structure of the reading and the lecture. They line up. The lecture is directly challenging the reading, and he's directly challenging it in the exact same order. The last thing I want to say about notes is you should try to get just about two notes for each point and each counterpoint. The templates I'm going to give you ask for two sentences about the reading and then two sentences about the lecture. So try to get two. You can get more, but two is about what you need. All right, finally, we're going to get to it, writing the essay. What's the first thing we write? Well, it is, of course, the introduction. How do you write an introduction? Well, you use a template. Now, a thing that should be said about templates. Well, the first thing is they work. Now. A lot of teachers out there will tell you, oh, you shouldn't use templates. That's bad advice. A lot of teachers will tell you, oh, the graders from the test are trained to punish students who use templates. That's bullshit. They'll tell you, oh, the graders are given a list of all the templates from the internet and they're showing these videos and they're told if students use these templates, they should be penalized. That's also bullshit. I'm basing that statement on interviews and discussions with actual graders. It's okay to use templates. In fact, it is very, very beneficial to use templates. I feel they give your essay a lot of structure. I feel they give your essay a lot of coherence. I feel they improve your grammar and I feel they make it easier to write a really long essay, which will increase your score. So I think you should use these templates from the video. Not only that, but I have freshly updated the templates for the 2018 version. So they are completely fresh. All right. So the template for introductions goes like this. The reading and the lecture are both about something, which fill in the blank. The author of the reading believes, and go ahead and fill in the blank. The lecturer challenges the statements made by the author. He is of the opinion that, 
And all you gotta do is fill in the blanks. Let's write a paragraph with the Chaco Canyon. I've color coded the, uh, the templates here. It goes like this. The reading and the listening are both about the great houses which are found around the Chaco Canyon in New Mexico. The author of the reading believes there are three possible explanations about how they were used. The lecturer challenges the statements made by the author. He is of the opinion that none of these theories is correct. You might say, well, what if I get an argument essay? Well, you'd say something like this. The reading and the listening are both about the Vikings, which are a people that came from Scandinavia. The author of the reading believes that the Vikings were the first Europeans to visit North America. The lecturer challenges the statements made by the author. He is of the opinion that the Vikings were not the first Europeans to visit North America. Now you might say, well, what if this is a problem and solution essay? Well, you might say something like this. The reading and the listening are both about using bacteria to clean up oil spills, which is very common these days. The author of the reading believes that there are three problems with this technique. The lecturer challenges the statements made by the author. He is of the opinion that bacteria is a great way to clean up oil spills. You see what I mean? It's going to work. It's going to work no matter what kind of question you get. Isn't that handy? I think so. A few general tips for introductions. First of all, you can shorten the introduction if necessary. Um, the introduction is the least important part of the essay, frankly. So you could delete the which is part. Uh, that's long. And some students struggle with the grammar. You could also even delete the last sentence of the introduction completely if you're really struggling to finish on time. Last point, don't copy right from the reading. That's a bad idea. Don't copy word for word from the reading. You need to paraphrase. You'll have the reading as you're writing, so it'll be really tempting to copy, but I don't want you to do it. All right, after you've got your introduction done, your next job is to write three good body paragraphs. Easy, easy. Well, is it? Yes, of course it is. A few tips for body paragraphs. First of all, write one body paragraph for each point-counterpoint combination, right? So the first problem and then the first solution, that gets a body paragraph. Remember, the lecture is the most important thing. If you have to shorten something, shorten your reading summary. I really want to stress that the lecture details in your essay are much more important than the reading details. So if you can't finish on time, shorten the reading summary. Go ahead and maybe even take out the second sentence from the reading summary that I'm going to show you in a minute. I don't like it, but if you have to do it, well, that's how you can shorten your essay. All right, so the first body paragraph gets a template like this. First of all, the author suggests that. It is mentioned that. This argument is challenged by the lecturer. He says, furthermore, he argues that, and just fill in those blanks. Be prepared, of course, for the lecturer to be a woman. You might need to say, she says. Here's the model. I'm going to read this one. I won't read the next two body paragraphs. First of all, the author suggests that the structures were used as residences for large numbers of people. It is mentioned that they are very similar to the apartment buildings located in Taos, where people have lived for a long time. This argument is challenged by the lecturer. He says that if they were used as residences, they would contain many more fireplaces than they actually do. Furthermore, he argues that the largest of the houses contains only 10 fireplaces, even though it was big enough to fit hundreds of families. 
you can see where I filled in the blanks, right? First of all, the author suggests that. It is mentioned that. This argument is challenged by the lecturer. He says, furthermore, he argues, you just got to fill in those blanks with the details from your notes. Second body paragraph has a different template. It's similar, but different. It goes like this. Secondly, the writer contends that. The article notes. The lecturer, however, rebuts this by asserting that. He elaborates on this by mentioning that. And here it is. Again, I'm not going to read this one to save a bit of time. But you can see how I filled in the blanks, right? Secondly, the writer contends that. The article notes. The lecturer, however, rebuts this. He elaborates on this by mentioning that. You can see that I shortened this down to a four-sentence template. I combined the transition with the first lecture detail. I think that just gives your essay a little bit more grammatical um, complexity. It lets you use this nice transitional word, however, and it lets you use a couple of parenthetical commas. You don't really have to worry about why I did it, but rest assured that the change here makes the grammar a little bit more sophisticated. And finally, here's your third body paragraph. Finally, it is stated in the article that the author establishes that. The lecturer, on the other hand, posits that. He puts forth the idea that, and there it is. You can see my note at the end. This one came out to 307 words in total. I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, word count in just a second. But as you can see, I just followed the templates. I did nothing out of the ordinary. I filled in the blanks with those details. Oh, I got lots and lots of good details. All right, that's it. That is your in degraded essay. A few final thoughts. Aim for about 280 to 300 words in total. You can write more than that. There's no penalty for writing more than that. But I find that that range is usually the sweet spot for most students. Um, if you try to write more than that, you're probably going to make a lot of mistakes because you'll be working so fast. Moreover, I want you to ignore the on-screen advice at the test center. I think that the actual software says something like a typical essay is between 180 and 220 words. Yeah, a typical essay might be that, but a typical essay is pretty low scoring. I think the average score in the writing section is like 20 or 21 points. That's not what you want. So you're going to have to write a little bit more. Furthermore, don't treat that on-screen advice as a limit, as a maximum. That is definitely not a maximum. You should be writing more than that advice suggests. Finally, you could write more about the lecture. Uh, if you want to write a bit more, that's fine. You could write a third sentence in some of the paragraphs. But don't write more about the reading. I mean, it's a waste of your time. You don't need to write more than two sentences about the reading. That won't help your score. Don't write a conclusion. You don't need it. Use that time to proofread your work instead. Writing a conclusion, writing a separate paragraph as a conclusion will not increase your score. But proofreading and fixing a couple of mistakes certainly will increase your score. Finally, beware bad textbooks. In most practice TOEFL textbooks, the integrated writing section is the worst. They give you some really bad sample questions. Now that you know the tricks that ETS uses to create these questions, you should know when you've got a bad textbook. I highly recommend the two official test collections from ETS. Those each have five questions and they are all very, very accurate. Even the official guide, the blue book, 
has some inaccurate integrated writing questions. So be careful when you are practicing. Make sure you've got good questions. All right, that is all I have to say about the integrated essay. Uh, for more of this kind of stuff, you can visit me at tofelresources.com. That is my website. If you go there, you can find a, uh, a print version of this guide, which has templates that you can copy and paste into your own work. You can also find some guides to the speaking questions. You can find some sample essays written by me. And for a small fee, you can sign up to have your practice essays evaluated and scored by me. I will check them line by line. I'll tell you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong, and I will correct all of your grammar mistakes. You know, it could help you get the score you need. Anyways, I'm going to leave it at that, but I hope you'll come back in a few days because I plan to upload even more videos about the writing and speaking sections of the test. Take care then, and bye-bye.